everybody. I am back from hiatus. Thank you so much to everyone who showed up for my January live streams. I had an absolute blast. I hope you did too, and hopefully I can do more streams with you in the future. But now it's time for some writing advice. We are officially in the month of love, which means it's time to talk about romance. Today I'm breaking down my advice for writing my favorite type of dialogue. Romantic wow. dialogue. Flirting, banter, love confessions, all that good stuff. I am hitting you with my best tips and you should totally pay attention. This is kind of my specialty. A lot of people struggle with writing romantic dialogue for the same reason that people struggle with communicating their feelings in real life. It's fucking hard, but it's all good. I am walking you through my 10 best tips for giving your readers heart flutters and giving your characters is a silver tongue. I mean, if you want them to have a silver tongue. Sometimes romantic dialogue is awkward and goofy. It depends on the character. We'll get into that later. Let me know which tip is your favorite in the comments below. Personally, I think more people need to pay close attention to tip number five, and tip number 10 is the easiest tip that most writers completely neglect for some stupid reason. Let's get into it. This topic was requested by one of my patrons over on Patreon, Loreen Bruder. Loreen is one of my OG patrons. She is super awesome. And like a lot of writers, she wanted to make sure her romantic dialogue was packing the punch it needed. That's where I come in. While you're here, be sure to subscribe to my channel and ring that bell. I post new videos on Wednesdays. We talk about all things writing, publishing, fantasy, romance, all that good stuff. We have such a great time. So please subscribe, please ring the bell. It helps me out so much and you'll love it here. I know I do. The first two books in my dark fantasy series, The Savior's Champion and The Savior's Sister are available wide. That means they're available at all major retailers. You can get them in ebook, paperback, hardback, and audiobook. So if you are into romance with a hefty dose of stabbing and violence and fantastical goodness, definitely check them out. It would mean the world to me. I got them linked below. With that said, let's dive into my 10 best tips for writing romantic dialogue. This includes love confessions. It includes flirting. It includes banter and a whole lot more. Number one, if it sounds like you've heard it before, you've probably heard it before. This is probably one of the biggest issues writers run into when they're crafting romantic dialogue. They rely on one liners they've heard a million times before, either word for word or with a slight variation. I would cross a thousand oceans to be with you. Nothing could keep us apart. Your beauty is endless. I could drown in your ocean blue eyes. Basically, anything involving oceans is probably a no-go. But Jenna, it feels like everything has been said before. That may be true, and some phrases are inevitable. If your character is in love with someone, they're probably gonna say, I love you at some point. I'm not telling you to reinvent the wheel. I'm telling you to avoid hackneyed cliches. A cliche is something that's been said before by countless other characters, which means if your character is saying it, either they don't have their own unique voice or you're shoving words into their mouth that don't belong there. Either you've betrayed the character or you don't know them, and neither of those things are good. Which brings us to number two, understand the character. I mention this in pretty much every dialogue video because it is vital to writing your character's voice. The better you understand your character, the better you can craft their personality, which is going to have a direct effect on how they speak. If you've created a shy character, it probably doesn't make sense for their flirting to be assertive. Instead, maybe their sweet nothings come out soft and stuttering. Maybe there's lots of long pauses and uhs and ums. Maybe they can't communicate how they feel at all. As we already covered, an easy way to kill the romantic vibe is to betray your character's voice. So before you write that swoony swoony dialogue, get into your character's mind and heart. It's so much easier to dish out the romance when you understand how this character would dish out the romance in their own way. On the flip side, number three, don't focus on the romance. I know this sounds counterintuitive, but hear me out. Sometimes the worst thing you can do when writing anything romantic is tell yourself, I have to make this romantic. 
you're putting all this pressure on yourself to perform, which typically results in the flaccid peen of the writing world. Stale cliches. Instead of focusing on nailing the romance, focus on expressing how your character feels. That's what romance is. It's a display of affectionate feelings. And in this case, the display is verbal. Put yourself in your character's shoes. Does their love interest make them nervous? Does the love interest make them feel free, safe, at home, or horny? Say that. Okay, you can probably find a classier way to say the horny part, but you get my point. Allowing your character to state how they feel in their own voice will not only help to nail the romance, it'll also ensure sure that the moment is genuine and authentic, which is super important if you want to tug at your reader's heartstrings. Number four, know what flirting is. The definition of flirting is trying to attract someone in an amusing way. The key words here are attract and amusing. Flirting is about evoking someone's interest in a way that should make them laugh or smile. They should be happy or entertained. Flirting can be expressed in a variety of ways. It can be playful or cheeky. It can be funny or teasing. It can be sexy and seductive. Again, this will depend completely on your character's personality. But you still need to have a basic knowledge of what flirting is supposed to achieve, especially if you want this dialogue to be effective. If your character is supposed to suck at flirting, you can basically disregard this point. But if your goal is to make the love interest and your readers swoon, remember attraction and amusement. If you don't have those two qualities, the flirting doesn't work. Which brings us to number five, know what flirting isn't. The big point writers often miss when writing flirtatious dialogue is the amusement factor. If it's not amusing, it's not effective flirting. Flirting is not supposed to be forceful, demeaning, intrusive, or condescending. A lot of writers translate sexy flirting into something domineering or scary, or they write playful flirting as something patronizing. If your love interest is calling the main character sweetheart over and over again, even though she's repeatedly told him how much she hates it, it's not flirtatious, it's just creepy. It's not hard to determine the difference between sexual pursuit and force. One is welcomed, the other isn't. And it's equally easy to see the difference between playful banter and patronizing language. One makes the character laugh, the other pisses them off. Number six, read the room. It doesn't matter how romantic your dialogue is, if it's ill-timed, it is a total boner kill. This is one of the reasons insta-love is so widely hated. A love confession that comes too soon isn't swoon-worthy, it just makes you cringe. If you're going to write a love confession, make sure the characters have already established a connection based on trust, friendship, vulnerability, and respect. I've made a zillion videos about this that go into a deeper explanation. You can check them out on my romance playlist. But even if the connection is established, it's still possible to bring the flirting at the wrong time. If your characters are fleeing for their lives in utter terror, raunchy flirting isn't gonna make any damn sense. How the fuck can you get hard when you're bleeding profusely? Is this a kink? As for love confessions, these are best saved for climactic, dramatic moments in the story. This is why we see love confessions on the battlefield or right before a character goes off on a dangerous mission. These scenes carry impact and thus they have a deeper effect on the reader. But your book doesn't have to have extreme stakes in order for you to make a memorable love confession. Maybe the characters are curled up in bed together after months of separation and the love interest whispers into the main character's ear, I love you. Maybe the love confession is made on stage at their high school reunion in front of all their former bullies. These options create a hell of a lot more intensity than a love confession in the tampon aisle in the middle of a Walgreens. Trust me, I've read some stupid shit. Long story short, where you place the dialogue matters just as much as the dialogue itself. So look for moments that carry impact and weight. Number seven, keep it simple, stupid. Have you ever read a long, rambly love confession that went on forever? Pretty shitty. Am I right? For starters, romantic monologues aren't necessary. You don't need pages upon pages to get your point across. Either your character's hearts flutter or their genitals tickle. It ain't that deep. Additionally, if your love or lust confession is endlessly long, you're likely falling into cliche territory. There are only so many original ways you can say I love you or I want you before you start repeating lines like you had me at hello or you complete me. And lastly, it's not realistic. Readers need to believe the romantic connection and a lengthy monologue completely kills it. That's not to 
say you can't write a love confession that's a couple paragraphs long, but if you're nearing an entire page or God forbid several pages, you're losing us. The vages are drying real quick. Quite often, a simple I love you or I want you gets the job done. I'm just saying. Number eight, realism is the antidote to cheese. But Jenna, what if readers find my dialogue cheesy? This is a valid fear, but the easiest way to eliminate the cheese factor is to make your readers believe what your characters are saying. And realism in romantic dialogue can be achieved in multiple ways. First is staying true to the character's voice, and second is keeping it simple, both of which we've already covered. Third is aligning your character with your intention for this romance. If you want your love interest to be a smooth Casanova, you need to create a character who would realistically be a smooth Casanova. If you've created a character who's the biggest, most insecure geek at school, no one's gonna believe he can spit mad game. Make sure the characters you've created align with your intention for this romance. You're in control after all. And lastly is character self-awareness. Yes, I realize that your characters are not real people, but try to think about how a real person would realistically act in their position. Maybe it's in character for your love interest to say something cheesy, and maybe after the fact they say, God, that was so cheesy. This could totally work, and maybe that's why the main character likes them in the first place. Ultimately, honesty and believability go hand in hand, and that's definitely the case in this situation. Number nine, sexy is subjective. Technically, romance as a whole is subjective, but I'm focusing on sexy right now because that's where all of you are fucking up. Sexy is in the balls or the vag of the beholder, so to speak. So if you're writing sexy dialogue, you need to take that into consideration. That's not to say you should cater your sexy dialogue to all of your readers because, as we already covered, that's impossible since sexy is subjective. But the sexy dialogue needs to translate appropriately for your target audience. Say your main character is a naive, inexperienced prince and his love interest is a rugged but gentle warrior. Given these character types, I'd expect the prince's sexy talk to reflect his inexperience, but I'd expect the warrior's sexy talk to be a combo of tender and powerful, strong but sweet. So if you start saying shit like, take that dick you filthy slut, readers are gonna be confused. On the flip side, if your book is about the notorious bad boy getting with the new girl in town, I'm gonna expect his sexy talk to be raunchy, not hopelessly romantic like, hold me closer, I never want to be apart. When you crafted this story, you created certain expectations. And while I love a good subversion, this ain't the time for it. That's not to say the good girl can't have a naughty side or the bad boy can't have a heart of gold, but you need to set your readers up for that. Let your readers know what they can expect ahead of time and then deliver on that promise. And last but certainly not least, number 10, adjust accordingly. The most common complaint I hear about writing romantic dialogue is that it's overwhelming. You know what you want your character to say, you just don't know how they should say it. Everything you come up with is cliche, it's too generic, or it just doesn't fit the character. First of all, take a deep breath, you can get through this, and second, it's actually super simple. Write the general idea of what you want your character to express and convey, and then adjust the wording to fit their voice. Say you want your character to say, you are so beautiful, but that doesn't fit them at all. They're way too closed off and definitely not remotely smooth. Simply take your beautiful and put that into the words of a closed off, unsmooth character. You look nice. I mean, your hair is shiny and your hands are good or something. God, forget I said anything. This conveys the idea. It's obvious this character finds their love interest attractive, but it's also obvious that they got marbles in their brain and they have absolutely no idea how to express it. Say your character is fiercely confident and kind of flowery and poetic even flamboyant. You're so beautiful could instead be written as, my, aren't you ravishing? A sheer delight for the eyes. Again, it's the same message, different voice, one that perfectly suits your character. So that's all I got for you today. A huge thank you to Lorreen Bruder for requesting today's topic. If you'd like the chance to have a video dedicated to you, or if you want access to tons of other rewards, check me out on Patreon. We've got an exclusive writing group. You get early access to my videos. There's monthly live streams. There's signs 
nine books. It's awesome. It's amazing. I've got it listed below. Get on it. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I post new videos on Wednesdays. And if you want to be alerted as soon as I upload, ring that bell. It is a huge help to me. And I so, so appreciate everyone who subscribes. So thank you so much. You're amazing. You're wonderful. I love you. The Savior's Champion and The Savior's Sister are available in ebook, paperback, hardback, and audiobook. So if you're in the mood for something romantic, something kind of dangerous, something kind of magical, pick up some copies today. They are linked below. You'll love them. And be sure to follow me on social media. I'm on Instagram, Tumblr, Facebook, and BookBub. And of course, you can tweet me at Jenna Moresi. Bye. This is Vrondi's. Why the fuck haven't you subscribed to Jenna's channel? Do you really want to face me? If you don't do it, you know what will happen. I'll rip out your tongue, torture you, then leave your rotten corpse out for the birds to feast on it. Now press the goddamn button. And the bell too.